very important factors there. The first one is that we must do much more to harmonize the regulatory framework in our region so that the private sector know there's one set of rules. It's very difficult for the private sector if there's one set of rules for building hotels in South Africa, another one in Mozambique, another one in Botswana and slowly slowly in my view we are moving to where we can get much more harmonization but there's still a long road ahead. That will unlock a lot of uh, job creation and investment in our sector. But secondly, we must have institutions that's able to finance what we want to do. And in South Africa, obviously, from the Department of Trade and Industry, we have uh, a department with a huge budget to do that. And that will now be transferred to our tourism department. But then in the region, we have the Development Bank of Southern Africa to do a debt financing for some of the projects and the Industrial Development Corporation. I think many people don't know about these debt financing options and that's why sometimes they are not properly used. So here's some of the criticism that has come out against the government in terms of policy that there are these policies and they sound fantastic but when it comes to follow through that doesn't happen and that holds the, the hotel industry back particularly here in South Africa. How do you respond to that? Follow through obviously it's always a challenge be it in government be it in the private sector and there's a responsibility on all of us that when we announce initiatives we do it what i find an equally serious problem than follow through or the lack sometimes of follow through is just the lack of information um, we are just talking about the uh, all the financing options i find that even with large companies in our own country sometimes they don't know what are the whole range of options available to them from government and organs of state and public-private partnerships. So much more the smaller players. So all of us should do a much better job disseminating that information. So let's talk about one of the things that the, your ministry is doing particularly and that's a tourism growth strategy, particularly domestic um, strategy for growth right here. And one of the issues that has come up again and again is the issue of affordability. So what are you planning to do when it comes to, to be able to, to address that issue? South Africa has always marketed itself as a value for money destination and that's very important. We're not a cheap destination. Some of our competitors in my view they've made the mistake of downgrading themselves and starting to market themselves as a cheap destination instead of a value for money destination. So that reputation as a value for money destination is very important to us. That means we have to get the balance right, specifically in the accommodation sector, between the four and five star establishments, the high end of the market, and the two and three star uh, establishments. We don't have that right in the private sector in my view. We have too many uh, percentage wise from the four and five star too little from the two and three star. So we have to get the balance right and that's what I discussed with industry leaders here. I was speaking to your counterpart from Mozambique and, and he was boasting their business tourism numbers and that's something that, that your ministry has said would, you would like to see here in South Africa grow that business tourism space because essentially that is where the, the money is. So how do you plan to grow that? Uh, it is one of our priorities and we've moved up that uh, global list uh, the last few years because we have state-of-the-art uh, convention bureaus, Cape Town, Durban, Johannesburg, but also literally hundreds of smaller conference and meeting venues all over the country. And yes, you are right, those are high-value tourists. They spend much more than leisure tourists. And we've just launched the new National Conventions Bureau at South African Tourism that will professionalize our approach in that, uh, in that regard and provide assistance. But I'm glad that Mozambique is doing well. I went to visit their conventions uh, facility recently and we would also like to encourage people to go there because if people come to somewhere in our region, be it South Africa, be it Mozambique, be it Botswana or Namibia, it's good to all of us because those people visit more than one country and especially business tourists. So after this conference when you go back to your office what for you is going to be the motivation from what you've heard from the different speakers from your counterparts about what's happening on the African continent, the opportunities that are there what is going to be for you priority number one when you return to the office? My first priority next week, I'm attending a meeting of the G20 countries, the T20, the tourism ministers, and we must get the cost drivers under control. One cost driver internationally are all the new departure taxes from developed countries that is hitting us developing countries, the long-haul destinations, very hard. And we need some kind of political intervention to deal with us because it's driving up the cost of uh, travel, tickets, and therefore travel.
travel to our destinations. It's actually a tax on our products internationally. And uh, the second one is uh, visas. In my view, we need to start introducing an e-visa system, starting with the G20 countries that has the capacity, but later on I think it will become global. That will make it much easier, much cheaper, but also from a security point of view, much more effective system.